I've got my safety glasses on, glare and all. It's Wednesday, I'm going to do what I want, and what I want to do is chainsaws. <laughs> I love chainsaws. I was watching a home improvement show, I was living in a basement apartment at the time. They were talking about keeping the saw out of the dirt, and how to sharpen the chain, how to take care of it, all stuff. I was just glued. I just was so, I was just like, man, now I need a chainsaw so bad so I can do these things. Uh, <laughs> that week, someone that owned a pawn shop needed an airbag swapped on a Volkswagen. They're afraid to do it. I told them, tell you what, if you've got a chainsaw that's good enough, and uh, I was excited about the Husqvarna because the whole Sweden thing, uh, but anyway, I'm half Swedish. So they had one sitting in the back. It was, I don't know how many years old it was. It was probably six years old, ten years old. And so I did a swap for it. I got a lot of use out of it. You've seen this in the cylinder swap video. Well, tonight I really, really needed it um, to get a tree out of the way. I pulled down an old cherry tree. I didn't have enough time to do the job unless this worked nice. I'm like, I know I just put a cylinder in. It'll run good. It ran pretty good last time. Got it out, and it just crapped the bed again. Like carburetor, fuel line, something. I don't even know what it is. Uh, it's just like dude I've had so many failures a cylinder failure and then I did just a piston without doing a cylinder and then it went bad again did a new cylinder and piston you know I've just been throwing parts at this thing and so anyway I was like ah, I'll fix it you know I love a saw I've had it for 12 years now so it's probably going on 20 years old so I went and got the neighbor saw and uh, immediately it had no fuel in it no bar oil so I fill it up get it all ready to go um, the chains loose like just miserably loose like this is after tightening and so I tear everything down pull the cover off uh, you know 19 millimeter you know get us all obviously see the powdery stuff that's from having a really dull blade sharpen the blade try to get through the cherry tree and it's just miserably slow and underpowered and too short and too little um, I don't know what this size is. It's just tiny though. Just itty bitty little thing. This is a 14 inch bar. Glad I didn't get the 16 inch. So, speaking of what I did get, I got another Husqvarna for better or worse. I was at the shop looking at uh, Still and Echo today. They didn't have the one that I wanted in stock. But this is the equivalent kind of what I had before. The other one that I had was, um, let's see, this is a 20 inch bar. That's what I've got. Uh, 50 cc engine. I think mine's like a 49, but it's all updated. So this is an unboxing video with big story in front of it. So this is the 450 ranch. This is the flagship that they had at the hardware store that I went to. And again, I'm a sucker for anything Swedish. Uh, Husqvarna 30-06, check. Hestra ski gloves, check, check. Uh, Husqvarna sewing machine, check. <laughs> I'm a sucker. I know that still is a better saw, but I just, I like the way these feel. They feel more like a chain. I mean, I, I don't drive a, a Duramax, I drive a Cummins. <laughs> I like the legit, uh, realistic diesel feel out of it. So, it already comes with oil. I just bought a couple things. And it comes with the tool. That's awesome. Of course, I already have one. So, what do we got? We have to turn this diagonal out of the box. Give it a flip. So, here it is. Advertisement. I just flante a delle troconese. Pour votre propre sécurité, et c'est de votre client en le vélence. I suck it. In French, but anyway. Click, click. So, in case you're wondering, um, you have a saw in this position when you're running, and the saw, it's always spinning around this thing. So, if you hit something like a nail or something in the wood and it kicks back up at you, or you hit a, go through a and you hit a branch and it kicks back, that arrests the blade there. There's a brake mechanism that just grabs the outside. It's like reverse drum brakes, it just goes down on it. So, 
Look at all this fancy laser engraved kind of stuff going on here. It's 20 inch or 57 meter, 325 inch chain, and they say that the width is 50 thousandths of an inch. Is that what that is? Anyway, it's just shiny and cool to me. It doesn't say 55 inch or anything like my old one does. But as you compare these side by side, you can see that they've made a lot of um, upgrades, a lot of changes over the years. <laughs> this thing looks archaic next to this. Uh, there's a lot of similarities. You still know where everything is pretty much, except for you've got the screw on this side. On this one, you got to scrape out all the gunk and get to it from this side. I've never really cared for that, so that's a good thing. You'll notice that this steel chainsaw, that's the way it operates. It's got the same kind of a thing with the screw right there. This gets covered in junk. I just cleaned that out. I like that. I like the air injection. It looks like this is a little, bit, a whole lot different uh, safety bar on that. You got the isolated vibration dampening set up here. Big old spring exposed there. See this thing's got some carburetor. I think it just flooded. It's been sitting in its own bar oil too. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so clean. I'm just a little bit giddy here. So a lot of the same features, you know, the vibration dampening thing. This has a rubber dampener. This has a spring dampener. It's kind of interesting. Turn it on this side. You know, they're all talking about air injection and how cool that is. This one's bragging up the X Torx. Something to do with the way that it starts or something. This is a 450 rancher, 55 rancher. And this has clips so you can get into, it's got a primer bulb, so you can prime the fuel on it. This one doesn't have that. It's got all kinds of starting instructions on the back of it. You know, one, two, three, all that kind of stuff. So your choke, you pull it back and go up here. And that's the uh, run position and choke on? I don't know. I got a kill switch on this one in a choke. You can see it's a lot different. You pull it one time like that and then that's the kill switch on that and you have to use screws to or a screwdriver to get all the top off to get into the air filter box let's pop that thing open i'm curious i have i seen that and i thought man that's pretty cool can you do it without tools mm, i would use a screwdriver so you don't it sounds stupid you'll break a nail but seriously it hurts mine are just too short because i just cut them today Look at that. You got a wire instead of a screw on your air filter. That is awesome. You can get into that, scrape off all the sawdust if you're out in the woods and you want to get to it. I like that a lot. All these thoughtful little upgrades on this thing. So I'm seeing it's changing the lever for the choke on that. I don't see anything in terms of a kill switch. So, let's see, warm engine. I'm gonna have to read the manual. Look at all the goober crap greasy stuff on this. What's that about? Why is that full of grease? You getting that? It's like full of, huh. I guess it's just to keep dirt and stuff out of there. I think it's supposed to be there for cleanliness, but it's kind of gross if you're not expecting it. So here's your spark plug. I, this is a cylinder decompressor, you know, whatever, make it easier to start when it's hot. Kind of like on your four stroke dirt bikes. This came with two stroke oil, so I'm saying it's two stroke. Didn't brag up four stroke, it'd have that all over it if it was. Cool. Now this little decompress thing, it's a little tough to get to. I mean, you can get it with your fingernails, but if you got gloves on, you're not going to be able to get into it. I'll do a follow-up video on this and let you know what I think of it. Now, here's something that's kind of cool. On my old saw, you've got uh, access for your oil here and your gas here. Same thing on this. I like it on the still, how they're right next to each other, and it's real easy to flip these up. And you know it's got the little ratchet made in Germany, overcomplicated little caps, but they're nice. I like that. On this one, it's got this, these little tabs that are real hard to get with, and so knowing that it's such a pain in the neck, they've got a little thing where your tool will interface. You know your little two-sided tool. 
With this one, it's ergonomic. It's actually pretty user friendly. Even with gloves on, you can get into this. Got the little leashes on it. Got a big gas tank. Seems like it's bigger than my other one, I'm not sure. Also works as a spark plug wrench, and it works as a bar wrench. So you got your nuts here. It's all the same sizes, same kind of thing, but instead of having two of them on this side, on the new one, you have just the one. You can see right there. Let's say, like I say, you loosen this, and then you turn it uh, counterclockwise, you got way too much slack, and then you turn it clockwise, brings it back into check. Just pull it back, it'll snap in. Tighten it down so you get just a little bit of creep. Just get a little bit of air gap. You're supposed to have a bar supported on the end like this when you do it. So you take your uh, weapon light box, prop it up. I'm looking like a prepper right now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being prepared. It's funny to give the name prepper. You know, people are like it's an obsessive disorder or something. I, I think it's good to be prepared, but not paranoid. So we got our Husqvarna oil, and of course they're real insistent that you have something that has some type of a fuel stabilizer. Mix with one gallon of gas, 2.6 fluid ounces, 77 milliliters. Aceite de tu tiempo, suele dos temps. Say they did two stroke oil, huh? Two times, two stroke. Two times oil. Cool. Never had a owner's manual before. I really like that. I'm not gonna keep this in the box with it. They're pretty explanatory. The thing is these manuals are so th they're thick. And why are they thick? Because you got English and then you got Spanish. Probably have French, Portuguese, I don't know. Tecnica de Trabajo. Work information. Cool, so that's what you have. Let's see what are these other leaflets or pamphlets that you have in here. Here is your warranty registration card, standard thing. You probably just go online and get it done there. You've got another paper that says how to obtain service. 90 days, two years. Electric talks about all the kind of warranty information, what's under that. Uh, purchased in Canada to the original purchase is free to do. This is a warranty information by country. This is an international type saw. If you need assistance, call these guys. They'll help you out. Or just go on and go to Donnie Boy and check out his YouTube channel. The guy's got these things down to a science. Safety stuff you gotta do. And say my old saw, it used to just pull like a horse. It was awesome, I loved it. But like I say, I've lost the cylinder and then it sat and I think I've got some fuel issues. I should have done the carburetor at the same time, done new fuel lines, didn't do it. So it talks about the process to See owner's manual for detailed starting instructions. Number 13. If all else fails and you can't do this, read the manual. That's funny. Never let moving chain come in contact with soil or dirt. That's huge. That is why I do not lend out my chainsaw to anybody. Seems like everybody, you know, they'll cut up a stump that's got dirt. You know, the dirt's actually on the log or something. You hit the dirt and it's basically like taking your knife and dragging it down the street. Because this thing's turning so fast that it's getting whipped on the, you know, what is dirt? It's teeny tiny rocks. So it's basically, I mean, you might as well take your, take your knife, driving down the street, you know, in your low rider, and just take the blade and just. Down the road, because that's what it does to your chainsaw if you hit the dirt. Don't do it. Well, let's put some oil and some fuel in this thing and. Let's rock this cast ball. Put in your bar oil. Bar oil keeps the chain lubricated and it has to feed oil constantly because of the heat and the dust and the conditions that the chain's running in, i.e. sawdust. So you get your Husqvarna chain oil. I could probably get another one of these quarts. What I like to do is I'll get a big jug and then just keep refilling one of the quarts 
and I keep the quart in the case for the saw and that way it's always there when you need it. Alright, that is at capacity. Stuff's a little bit like honey. Growing up my dad always just used oil, change oil. It was just really messy. It just caused everything to be that much dirtier. This stuff keeps things pretty clean. I just like to have things clean. I'm a little bit obsessive that way. Cleaner the better, in my opinion. I'm into dirty stuff all the time. Dirt biking, mechanic stuff. So I really cherish stuff that's clean. Just a little less than capacity, but looking pretty good. Alright, so we're cold, so we don't need the hot engine decompress thing, I don't think. I have no idea how to use this modern saw, because I've been using my 20-year-old saw for quite some time. Three to six times. It whistles when it wants you to go some more. So, let's see, six times, pull it. So I'm going to say, go ahead and... So, break on. Break off, give it some rest. I was a little premature on that. Nope. What do you want from me? Clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. So you hold this down and that's the kill button right there. Doo -doo -doo. So pull it out, that's the choke. Run position, kill. So that makes sense, that's pretty intuitive. You look at the chain, it's already got bar all, oil all over it. So I actually need this saw tonight. So I'm going to read the instruction manual and make sure that I do a good break-in process with it. Usually with a two-stroke dirt bike, when I put a new cylinder in it and run it, I just run it just kind of manzy pansy, you know, about 20 miles an hour or third gear. Run it for about four miles on just a real flat, plain surface. Wouldn't heavy load it real bad immediately. I don't know if these are happy. Oh, you know what? I had this popped out. I had the decompress uh, extended. Let's see if it runs any better now. If you run it indoors, you get carbon monoxide poisoning. I just did it for a few minutes for the video. And uh, anyway, I'm excited. I got a new chainsaw. <laughs> I've been wanting to get a new saw. I've been on the fence about it for the last year or so. So I'm pretty excited. I like it. So got my work light all set up. I don't want to stress this all a lot. I was just kind of taking it easy getting in there. 
I didn't want to like keep it pegged all the time. I got into it a little bit, I couldn't resist. <laughs> anyway, it works pretty good. I'm really glad that I got the bigger engine. There's a 40cc and this is the 50cc. And I really like having that power. Having a longer bar, I think 18 inches is plenty. 16 is too dang short, 14 is just a crying shame. Um, but I think I made the right decision getting the 50 and I think the Husqvarna, I like Husqvarna. I've used the other saws and they're nice, they're more user friendly. But that chainsaw feeling, just the Rawr! I like the Husky for what it has to offer. Still is a really good one too, I like still. If you're going to be using it every day and you want the creature comforts of it, you know, I'd get the still, but I think this is perfect for what I do. And the price point's pretty good. I paid $400 for this one, $399. So. It, it hurts paying $3.99 for a chainsaw instead of doing trade for putting in an airbag on a Volkswagen. I'd rather do the Volkswagen airbag trade thing, but uh, and get a used one. But getting the new saw, I got everything up to date, got a warranty, all that kind of stuff. So, yeehaw. I used to never care about warranties, but I'm so dang busy nowadays, and editing and filming takes so much time. It's just nice to not have to worry about my stuff and just worry about you know things that come along for everybody else because of course they've got their expectations I got a new chainsaw <laughs> Merry Christmas to me that's the thickest part of the tree right there <laughs> that's not bad I like that when I bought this saw years and years ago, it wouldn't fit the case because the handle stuck out so far on that side, so I had to cut it. When you look at the new saw, you can see the cut that I made in the case right here isn't necessary because it fits. Now this case, I've had it now for probably close to 10 years. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the old case fits the new saw like a glove. It's perfect. So I've got all my uh, files. I've got my little bag of tricks, you know, with the guide for the file. I got the handle for the file, lighter, uh, chain guide, all that kind of stuff. Ready to rock. And then my uh, bar scabbard. It fits and it's all good to go. So that's the plus about the Husqvarna is you get a case that you can strap to the back of a motorcycle, hang it off the back, you can run straps through the handle and it's not going to go anywhere and your saw is not going to bounce around a lot so that it's protected and it's held in there pretty good. I like that. I couldn't get that with the still or the Echo.